the SnowRunner update 7.0 release date has been confirmed. Here's that and some other juicy news about the updates coming after it. Hello and welcome to this SnowRunner news bulletin, one so fresh it's moist, where I will simply play the game and tell you all the latest gossip, including the release date for update 7.0. Yes. Now there's actually quite a lot, so let's get started. Spoilers ahead, you have been warned. Let's start with update 7.0. Saber Interactive lead producer Ezerokin said on Discord that the release date is Monday, which in numbers is the 7th of September 2020. At least one previous update was launched in the morning UK time, so I'd expect a similar thing especially as Focus Home is a French company and it seems to deal with all this stuff. Yes, that means you'll be cruising around in the second of the two Kola region maps in Russia, formerly Afrikanda and now Imandra. Included is a new truck to play with, the TUZ-108 Warthog, or Wathog if you can't read, plus missions in Michigan, same Wi-Fi co-op, interior items, trials, which are basically extra difficult missions, supposedly Thrustmaster steering wheel support and various bug fixes. There's also a better engine for the Ford F750, which is really underpowered, as well as magical suspension for the TUZ-16 Acteon, and all-wheel drive for the wonderful Western Star Twin Steer 6900, which I made a video about that will soon be obsolete. As previously teased, SnowRunner will also be getting a new truck in update 8.0. It's the Chevrolet Apache, a 6x6 Scout that has always on diff lock and switchable all wheel drive. The best configuration if you ask me, but no one did. It cannot haul trailers, but it does have two repair fixtures, a back one like the Ford F750 and one on the roof, both with 150 repair points. Tires are 44 inches in size with off-road mud and chained rubber available. Other upgrades include the SnowRunner gearbox, but not raised suspension as it would then poke through the clouds because it's so high already. Fuel capacity is 95 litres and there's a Cuban flag paint job if you fancy it. Yeah, no idea why either. It's a shame to see yet another Scout, to be honest. I think many of us grumpy old SnowRunner veterans want some fresh big trucks to tip over, but then that's what Phase 2, 3 and maybe Phase 4 are about. Coming to your PC, PS4 and Xbox in the year 2047. Now for some juicy update 9.0 news. When asked about securing a vehicle on a trailer, Ezra Roken, new chap who also recently told us more about console mods, responded, I would propose to wait until patch 9 arrives on PTS, then you'll be able to see for yourself. And then he added a winky face. PTS being the public test server, which is currently running update 8.0, and that's apparently done. So maybe the wait for 8.0 will be less painful than the one for 7.0. Speaking of 8.0, sorry more numbers, Ezerokin added, We've just updated PTS build, it has only one change. Fix for users who are still unable to connect in the same network. A reference to that annoying same house co-op bug. He added, apart from that, patch 8.0 is locked and we are currently focused on a huge patch 9 that will contain lots of fixes and improvements and phase 2 content. Some of the more interesting things in patch 9.0, in my opinion, is the ability to secure trucks on trailers and fully working mod browser. Brackets, as you may guess, we needed to implement it for console mod support. Based on my source, update 9.0 could land on PTS in October 2020, which isn't so far away given that we have two updates to play with in the meantime. In fact, as Aroken said, quote, the rough estimate is several weeks. So more than two, basically. Not done with your SnowRunner news fix? Greedy. So I've also been told that the first map of the Canada region will be called Flooded Foothills. <laughs> or for Thills. And the second is Big Salmon Peak. No prizes for guessing what fish live there. Now in these notes, posted on the Focus Home forum, there is a reference to the Caterpillar TH357. That's the rugged forklift tractor truck thing, and the files reference the need to unload cargo on a platform. So it sounds like forklift work will be a thing. There's also another truck from Caterpillar, the 770G. 
This beast is the truck many of us will have had as a toy. Yes, SnowRunner is getting a dump truck. Christmas has come early. Allegedly, it comes from completing the mission dump truck for dump truck which would make sense. Now, I couldn't possibly comment on whether said dump truck can um, dump, but I will say that it would be strange if it didn't and that it should come with a big tank add-on. Also mentioned is the aforementioned user interface tweaks that get mods ready for consoles and two new cargo types. The first is metal rolls, which are rolls of metal. Merci, Monsieur Boileau. The second is a cabin, which is a small cabin for workers during construction. The leak also listed every mission in Canada, which I won't list because it's boring and spoiler heavy. But from what I can see, it does add a variety of mission types. And that there are more trials on the way, including one called Zalia Cody, Zalia Co, anyway, whatever, in which you have to visit four watch towers. Anyway, I'll round up the news here. Hopefully by the time you watch this, Amandra has arrived and we're on the way to more update goodness. Feel free to check out my other SnowRunner truck videos and of course subscribe because there's plenty more content on the way. Now it's time for a quickish Q&A slash best recent comments slash cool things made by my tribe. The first is that apparently I should do a collaboration with AR12 Gaming. I'd actually like this, he knows his stuff and I've watched quite a few of his videos, but he has absolutely no incentive to do so as I have 13,000 subs and he has millions, so don't expect this anytime soon. Nezcat said, the Tega sucks in deep snow with almost any tires and is so annoying the pause it takes on every gear change. I will not tolerate such blasphemy in the house of Tega King. I took some flack for my anti-loaf love. Now to be fair, I did say I love driving it. I just want it to be better. Khan Loaf commented, I am insulated. I think he meant insulted, although winter is coming, and who isn't concerned about their home heat retention? The King Cognito, nice name, chimed in. The loaf is a horse of a vehicle. Get yourself a loaf. He capitalized horse and vehicle, so he means business. He also said it was a great video, so he's now on the Christmas card list. Tom20, your wish has come true. After 37 years of asking to feature, you now have. Don't let the phone go to your head. Gion Tan, another fan who was featured in the background, but never for his own efforts. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride, right? Anyway, your time to shine is here. Enjoy. Also a shout out to my Patreon fans and to the one person who you donate bot on Discord. It was gathering dust, so that's nice. Jokes aside, these donations really help, so thank you. Many of you were terrified by my last video, and rightly so. Those eyes, oof. I still have nightmares. I'd actually like to do some sort of Halloween video. I'll see what I can think of. Cool Skeleton 957 without an O left an especially cheery comment about that abandoned warehouse that features. The scariest thing about the abandoned warehouse is that it's a spitting image of a classic Soviet prisoner of war camp. And if you drive to the southwest a bit, you can find a mine marked with radioactive signs. So as I believe, prisoners would have to walk from the warehouse to the mine. They would slave away in the radioactive environment and at the end of the day walk back to the warehouse. Most of them died, but some say they haunt the place. Wow, I haven't been this depressed since I watched The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. Meanwhile, one of my esteemed Discord members created a Tega car. Looks great, but sadly, the money I get paid from YouTube and merchandise sales does not cover classic Ferraris. Kaney Lai Lay said, Why the F... Can't say that, family channel. Are you racing naked, though? He's talking about my Logitech G923 review, but it also happens in the Playseat Challenge review. You'll be pleased to know I wasn't actually naked. That would be weird. I had my green mankini on. And lastly, there was a lot of love for both the Azov 73210 and the DAN 96320 in the comments of my comparison, but not so much love for the googly eyes. Why would you not like them? And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I shall see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.